Welcome to the Helix webinar series. Today's session is on migration tools for Helix containers. For those that don't already know, we ran a session a couple of weeks ago, which was on the 11th. So this is the second part and we have one more also coming up. We are gonna focus on digital workplace export and import utility today. Um, fortunate to have two presenters, um, Anitha and Morali, who will introduce themselves as we move through the session. But firstly, I just wanna make a couple of reminders. We have the Q&A section on Zoom. So please use that if you have any questions during the webinar session. We do have a couple of videos we will also play. Um, the rest of it will be live. So if you put your questions there, we should roughly have around 15 to 20 minutes at the end where we will take live Q&A um, questions. Just also a reminder, this is being recorded. So if you do want to speak at any point and you want to hide your name, please change yourself to anonymous um, because we will be sharing this on all of our social media after. So I'm now gonna hand over to our first presenter, Morali, for the introduction. Over to you. Hey, thanks, Amanda. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Morali Vishwanaga and I'm from uh, the extended R&D team. Uh, we are called SEAL team, but uh, we are from R&D. Uh, so today we'll be covering the uh, uh, data migration utility for DWP. So, uh, so end of the day, as uh, Sam said, we are trying to do a series of these tools which are used for the migration process, whether it's on-prem or SaaS. So these are the tools we're making available for the customers, partners, and our own PS teams to use and consume. So today for the DWP data migration, we'll be covering the planning of what you need to plan for it, the prerequisites how and where to find the utility and download and review the files. And then we'll be doing the main aspect of the tool, which is the exports and the import. I would also try to cover some errors and troubleshooting and finally the Q&A. Uh, next slide, please. So let's look at the some of the planning activities. So as I said, so the DWP export and import utility is one of the migration tools to be used. So the other tool, as you most of you already know, is the HTM or Helix Data Manager Utility, which basically tries, which basically helps you to migrate your data for ITSM, digital workplace catalog, smart IT and smart reporting. And the DWP export and import utility helps you to migrate data for specific DWP module and forms and tables associated with it. Um, so the next two slides, I'll be going through the process which this tool supports um, end of the day. So next slide, please. So one of the process the tool supports is the end-to-end -end migration process for on-prem to SaaS. Um, Anita, can you click the button one more time for me, please? One more time, please. Okay, so no, 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 I'll go back um, the slide. I just wanted to highlight the stages, yeah. So so the stage one through stage three is where you'll be, um, at least on-prem to SaaS, if you're doing an on-prem to SaaS migration, you will, stage one is where you'll activate your systems. Stage two is where you'll be making sure everything is ready for you from an FTP standpoint or a configuration standpoint, RSSO, whatnot. Stage three is where you'll be migrating your customization, then your integration configuration, all that. So once all is done, stage four is the critical piece for data migration. So stage four, once you complete your data migration for ITSM, is when we recommend you to use this utility to migrate DWP, right? We do not want you to use DWP first. We wanted you to want you to use HTM first to migrate ITSM data and then migrate your DWP data, right? Uh, so this is the process, uh, the, the, the link there below is the end-to-end process found from the SAS and it explains all these stages and, and when you go to stage four, it'll, it will explain all the tools to be used for the data migration. Similarly, uh, and it's our next slide, please, for the on-prem, uh, on-premises container deployment and migration process, we have a similar process where we explain all the stages. And again here, again, and if you click twice, it will emphasize on stage four, again, where you'll be using the, the tools for migration. Uh, next slide, please. So the infrastructure, right? So for the DWP utility itself, the infrastructure is uh, is basically, uh, uh, what is that, uh, Anita, you have that covered somewhere, maybe you'll cover it somewhere, but again, the reason we are we are emphasizing the 100 GB uh, disk space and 12 GB RAM and eight CPUs for, we want you to have a tool server, to be honest, right? So at the end of the day, you'll be installing not just DWP, you'll be installing all these tools listed in the, in the, the screen there. So you'll be installing the HTM, workflow migration utility, DWP utility, license conversion, auto recon, all that stuff, right? Uh, so you need a one tool server, which we which we recommend you to use, right? Whether it is you're doing an on-prem migration or on-prem SaaS, same thing. So we recommend you to have a tool server. That's why we want you to have a 100 GB uh, disk space uh, environment, right? And um, Windows environment is where uh, most mostly the HTML work, right? 
So, but for this demo purposes, we have used a Linux environment because DWP is capable of running in both environments. So that's the flexibility. So we're showing you that. Um, next slide, please. And I think that's where I'm transitioning to Anita. Anita, you can take over. Yeah, thanks, Morli. Hello, everyone. This is Anita Raja from SEAL team. So uh, I'm very happy and delighted to present this session on DWP export import utility. So the DWP export import utility is designed to migrate DWP data from a non-converged database to the converged database. So the export will include tables uh, in business schema and also the tables in system schema. When we say tables in business schema, the data, uh, the components that are included in the uh, business schema are listed as below, like location, calendar, services, et cetera, till uh, social data. And in system schema, we will have the data for the components related to providers, SMTP configurations, and user sessions. So these are the high level steps uh, for running uh, end to end migration using the DWP export import utility. So the first step is to download the utility from EPD. The second step is to set up the export utility and we need to run the export utility and set up the import utility and run the import utility. Let's examine the details of each steps. First, let's talk about the download part. So we just log into EPD and search for PMC Helix Digital Workplace Advanced On-Prem. And we can see the uh, versions here. Uh, we select the latest version. And then after selecting, we can uh, go to products and search for this BMC Helix Digital Workplace on-prem data migration tool. So this one would be the uh, installer and we can click on this and uh, download. Once the utility is downloaded and extracted, you will be uh, seeing a list of export utility folders and one import utility folder and a, a doc file. Let's see uh, what that uh, means. So in export utility files, this folder will contain a zip file, which when extracted will give us scripts, connection, and lib folders, and uh, required jar files are placed inside it. So uh, based on our source DWP uh, version, if it is 2002, we need to select export utility underscore 2002. Or if it is 2008, we need to uh, select accordingly. And then uh, we need to download and extract this utility in the tool server uh, for both on-prem and SaaS migrations. Next is import utility. This folder also contains a zip file which when extracted will give us scripts and lib folders and it will have uh, the required jar files in, inside it. So uh, we need to download and extract this import utility in tool server in case of on-prem migrations. And in case of SaaS migrations, we need to do this in development staging server. And we have seen a doc file, uh, which is DWP data export import utility. This is a, uh, you know, a guide. It's a kind of guide which uh, guides us through the step-by-step uh, -step details how to use this utility. So let's uh, move on to export utility setup. So now uh, we need to have that export utility folder downloaded into your on-prem tool server. And we, we can create a, uh, create a folder and copy this uh, utility folder inside it and then we need to extract the zip file which is inside that uh, export utility file once extracted uh, as we can see we can see uh, three folders and the jar files inside it so in export utility these are the uh, main files that we have to have uh, configured so first two are like set underscore environment and connection properties are the configuration files and let's talk about set underscore environment file. So this file, we will input some values into the files, which uh, which are basically the environment variables used, uh, used to run the export. And in connection properties, we will be uh, inputting the source DWP database details because the export runs uh, through direct DB access. 
So we need to provide the DB details in the connection properties file. We also have a file named run pre-export. This file we can use to uh, check some of the pre-export parameters. So we basically need to run this file before running actual export. So the run export is the actual uh, export, uh, you know, running, uh, which will run the export and uh, write the data. So let's uh, see how to uh, set up the connection properties. For setting up the connection properties, we have to navigate to the connection directory and configure connection.properties file. Once we open the connection uh, directory, we can see three types of, uh, I mean, basically three properties file, uh, MS SQL connection properties, Oracle, and Postgres. So we need to select one according to the source uh, database type. So if our source database type is MS SQL, we need to open this MS SQL connection properties file and input the details there. Similarly, we need to choose the other two based on your source DB type. So the parameters that are included in this file is basically uh, uh, the DB details like host name, uh, database host name, the database port, and uh, as we have to extract data both from business and system schemas, we need to give business uh, schema name and uh, user credential to access this business schema tables. Similarly, system schema name and uh, user credentials to access this system schema details. So we have got some templates uh, of MS SQL connection properties and Postgres connection properties. As you can see, both have same uh, set of parameters and you can configure these details according to your source database. And uh, there is there will be a difference in Oracle connection properties, which is this business service name wherein you can input either a, a business service name, schema service name or the SID. Similarly, system schema service name or SID. So this is the difference uh, for the Oracle connection property. So let's move on to this set underscore environment file. This file can be found under scripts directory. And uh, this would be uh, having so uh, the following parameters like the tenant ID, Tenant ID uh, is the one, the value which we set in tenant ID will be used to extract the data. So the recommendation uh, is to set as all tenants in case of both single tenant and multi-tenant environment. Next is DB type. As uh, we have discussed, based on our uh, source database type, whether it's MS SQL, Oracle, or Postgres, we need to input the value for this field accordingly. Output file path is file location where the exported file will be written into. So it basically creates a zip file and write, uh, write our data. So we need to give a location for, uh, for writing that data. So since date is the parameter which is used exclusively for the delta data migration. For full migration and for initial migration, we need to keep it blank. Next, there is a parameter named notification days before. So this parameter will be applied only for S2 notification and S2 notification status tables. So as we know, these uh, two tables will have notification processing data. So typically, this uh, uh, data will be processed and all the active data will be processed within a day. So we recommend you to set a minimum uh, one day up till a maximum of 90 days only for this parameter so that we don't uh, migrate any uh, unwanted data. Similarly, we have a special parameter called data transfer underscore user session days before. So this parameter will be applied for user session table. The recommendation is to set as 90 days here as well. So other parameters are used internally by the utility. So we uh, uh, we do not alter this. Uh, let's uh, look at the tenant ID parameter in detail. So generally, whether it is single tenant or multi-tenant, we can provide the value like uh, tenant ID equals all tenants. So this will basically migrate all the data from your source DWP system to your target system. If in case you have some exceptional use case like uh, consider you have a, a multi-tenant environment having uh, main tenant IDs 1 and 2, and you don't want to migrate 
tenant two and its data. So now you can just input a value like here, main tenant ID one followed by a percentage so that only data related to the tenant ID one will be exported. So let's talk uh, about pre-export file. So basically this pre-export file, uh, as we said, it, it is to be run before running the actual export. So you can see a sample output of this pre-export. So this uh, pre-export file will give us details about number of attachments which are exceeding seven, uh, I mean, five MB in your source system. And what is the minimal heap size required for the export? And we can see the number of records in the user session table. All these details will be uh, given as an output when we execute this file. So for real time system, we can run as dot slash uh, run pre-export.sh. And for Windows, you just uh, run that uh, run pre-export bat file. Okay. The next is to run a uh, run export file. So similarly, we can run using this run export command. And uh, once uh, uh, executed, we will see a, a zip file getting created which will have a set of XML files and JSON files. XML files will have uh, business and system uh, schemas data, and then JSON files will have the social data. So let's uh, look at a demo for running the export utility. Hello, everyone. In this video, let us execute the steps to run DWP export utility. I have logged into the server where I had downloaded the utility. I had created a folder named demo export and extracted my IT 20 O2 zip file. Now we can see three folders named connection, lib and scripts. As our source environment DB type is MS SQL, I have configured database connection properties in mssql.connections.properties file. Let us now go to the scripts folder and configure set environment file. So our test environment supports multiple tenants. Therefore, I have given the tenant ID as displayed here as all tenants to retrieve data belonging to all the tenants and all of the subtenants. If in case we need to migrate only uh, data related to specific tenant and its subtenants, we can give uh, input like this, the tenant ID followed by a percentage. The next parameter is the DB type. As our source instance is uh, MS SQL, I'm giving MS SQL here. And DB connection properties file. This is where we have configured the MS SQL connection properties. So I have given the path of this connection property file here. And output file path. So this is where uh, the exported data will be written into. So we need to name it like the export file name dot zip. So by default, if we specify like this, the export underscore demo dot zip will be created under the scripts folder. Now, um, uh, as I'm running a full migration, I am leaving this sin state parameter blank. For the notification days before parameter, I am setting it to one to migrate only the active notifications data. So let us run, run export dot sh. We navigate to this location and then run export.sh. 
Now the expert has commenced. We can see the export is progressing for each tables. Now our export is completed. We can see uh, see the export demo dot zip uh, get created here, and uh, we can review the log files inside the log folder. Let me just open the log file. So this is the log file, and uh, we can see uh, there are two tenants in the source environment: one main tenant and a sub tenant. So we can see the data getting exported for both the tenants. We can also see that uh, all entities have been exported in this much uh, this, this much time. Hello, everyone. Okay. So let's move on to import utility setup. Similar, uh, similar to the export utility, we need to download the import ut utility. Uh, in case of uh, on-prem migration, we can uh, download this utility in on-prem tool server. And in case of uh, SaaS migrations, we need to do it this in development staging server. Create a folder and copy this import utility. And then extract the zip file uh, named my IT data transfer inside the utility. Once extracted, we can see uh, lib and scripts folders as, uh, as displayed here. So the uh, the first uh, the first step to run the import utility is to copy the exported zip file into the scripts directory. So this is the one which we have exported from the previous export step, and we need to copy and paste that uh, exported data only inside the scripts directory. And we need to set uh, the below environment variables in the tool server or the development staging server according to your, uh, uh, your use case. And then these are the parameters that we need to uh, set as environment variables. So after setting, we are good to run the run import. Once import is completed, we need to restart the DWP Tomcat. So let's uh, move on to the import demo now. Play that. Hello, everyone. In this video, we will walk through the steps to execute the DWP import utility. I have logged into the server where I have downloaded the import utility. First, I have created a folder named demo import and extracted the import utility jar file into it. Inside the folder, now we can see lib and scripts folders. Next, I have copied the exported zip file into the scripts folder. The exported file should only be placed within the scripts folder. Let us proceed with the import process. Before running import, I have made sure that the target DWP is a fresh installation without any tenant or subtenant configurations. We can see a list of export commands that I have used to set the environment variables required to run the import utility. I have also set is underscore password variable. Now let me run run import.sh. The import is initiated. We can see the import is progressing. Now our import is completed. We can review the results in the log files generated inside the log folder. Let me open the log file here. So this is the log file where we can uh, see the records getting imported for each table. We need to check for any exceptions in the log file and make sure that all the data is imported. Also, if there is any failure, we will have a failed record zip file getting created inside the scripts folder. So with the 
exceptions captured in the log files we'll be able able to address all the failures which are captured inside the failed record.zip and we will be able to rerun the import for the failed records once the import is complete please restart the dwp tomcat to view the imported data now let us look at a scenario where we have set some of the environment variables incorrectly in such cases we will be having exceptions and the import utility will not run let me set an incorrect url for is url parameter and try running the import I am just inputting a broken URL and I am running run import.sh. Now we can see the exceptions captured here. Similarly, if you are setting any incorrect credentials for demo user we will also be seeing authentication failure exceptions so let me fix this now i am setting the correct url and then running the input Now the import is started. Okay. Uh, now let us uh, talk about addressing import failures. As uh, we have seen uh, discussed in the demo, in case of any import failures, we will be having a failed underscore records dot zip getting created under the scripts directory, and uh, the log log files will help us to find the exceptions, and uh, we will have to investigate and the fix uh, and fix the issues uh, related to failed records dot zip. Once the issues are fixed. We can rename this failed underscore record dot zip as export dot zip. This should be the same name as given in the import file path parameter. And then we need to back up the older export dot zip file and the log files and then rerun the import. So this will help us to uh, rerun the failed records. We need to make sure that all the failed records are imported so that uh, we can uh, we can be sure that the, the migration is successful. So let's talk about uh, Delta data migration. As we know, the DWP export import utility supports Delta data migration. And uh, for that, we just need to uh, navigate to the scripts directory in the export utility and edit a parameter in set underscore environment file. The parameter name is since underscore date. Okay, so the since date should be set uh, for the date from which we need, we want to run the Delta export. The format is given here and an example is given uh, uh, displayed here. We recommend uh, allowing a 20 minute overlap between the full migration date and the Delta migration date in the since date parameter. For example, if we had run the full migration uh, up till May 1st, 10 a.m., in the sin state parameter, uh, we can set as May 1, 9.30 a.m. Uh, for the delta run so that we allow a uh, um, minimum 20 minute overlap there. So we also uh, have to make sure that we keep the other parameters undisturbed. Uh, 
that should be same as uh, as in the full migration particularly this tenant id field so for example if we had set uh, a tenant id as 001 percentage in your full migration and while running delta migration if you are changing the tenant id as all tenants then uh, we will uh, land into import failures so it is recommended and it is a must to uh, you know uh, not to alter this tenant id field between the full migration and the delta migration to have a smoother import so we did talk about this pre checks like pre export file so the, uh, there are some parameters i mean the, there are some um, we, we can see uh, from the pre-export file, uh, there are some uh, details that is been uh, given to us. Uh, examples like attachments larger than 5 MB and the minimal heap size required for export and uh, the number of records in the user session table. So uh, we need to review the details and uh, make use of this pre-export file uh, before running the export um, And then uh, we also have to uh, look at uh, the S2 notification and S2 notification status table because uh, usually this these two tables will hold a large amount of data and if we leave it blank uh, we have to export uh, and migrate every all the data so it is not uh, recommended to leave it blank instead we can set a minimum of one uh, which will be enough to migrate the active data and a maximum of 90 days if in case you want to have some historical data so you can set it a maximum of 90 days. So uh, we can uh, talk about the issues and troubleshooting. So usually the, we can find some issues in uh, import that is uh, dependent on the source data. There could be some corrupted uh, data in your source DWP system, or uh, there could be some uh, attachments uh, large having a larger size that is acceptable in the target AR server. So this uh, kind of issues may happen in your import and uh, it will be reported to you uh, in the log files and as in the form of failed records.zip. So we need to review the log files carefully to capture any exceptions or error messages and we need to take action. So the file record file, file will give us more details like uh, which tables the import error has occurred. So this will help us to, uh, you know, backtrace, uh, backtrace the uh, issue and then uh, we can fix the issue and then we can rerun the file records. For example, we have this larger attachment size issue. So when we, uh, when we said like there is a, uh, limit set in uh, AR server like 5 MB. If your uh, source the DWP uh, they, uh, you know records have some uh, attachments or images which is exceeding this size, and uh, while uh, importing, we will land into some exceptions, and uh, we will have some failed records. So the exception usually uh, looks like. Uh, we, as we can see in the left side, the file size exceeds the maximum limit. So this is the exception uh, we have captured in our, uh, uh, in, you know, this run. And then uh, we have seen a failed records.zip in the right side. When we see that, we can find out that uh, there is a, a, a icon, bulk failed icon. That means there is a record in icon table, which is, uh, you know, exceeding the size limit of the attachments. So by using these, uh, these details, we need to uh, fix the exceptions and then uh, we, we need to rerun the failed records, the import for the failed records. Yeah. With that, uh, we have reached the conclusion of this presentation. I will now uh, pass the floor to Sam for the Q&A session. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you, Anita. Let me just um, unmute everyone so they've got the option to talk. And I can see we did have a hand raise. Um, for those asking about the video, I know a few of you saw poor quality. Um, we have been working with Zoom over the last couple of weeks and they have applied a new setting. 
um, which we weren't able to put on to today's for the videos, but I will be sharing those out in the thank you email so you can watch those at a better quality. Um, and I'm hoping going forward, any simulated live ones will have HD access. So um, the next one that we will be doing simulating live is on the 16th. Um, so it'd be really good to get your feedback. Um, why we're doing that. So Abdo, I can see you raised your hand. Um, let me just give you access to talk. I believe you had a question. I don't know if it was related specifically to um, just the recording or if you have a genuine question that you want to ask. Can you hear us? Abdo? I can see you've got your hand raised. I've just um, unmuted you. Do you still have a question? I don't know if you're having problems with audio because I can't see anything moving. Um, if you want to maybe type your question into the Q&A or maybe rejoin with your audio facility. And for everyone else, um, you should have access now to be able to um, either raise your hand, put a question into the Q&A um, or just generally ask us if you've got any questions. Um, why I do that? Um, We'll go back to the Q&A. Um, so, Morali, I see we have a question from Melanie. So, Melanie was asking a question around what are the notification forms that are limited to 90 days? Do you want to take that first question? And, Melanie, feel free to come off mute. Yep. Hey, thank, hey Sam. Thanks. Yeah, so that's the uh, the two tables we talked about, right? The S2 notification and S2 notification status. So those are the uh, two tables which we uh, don't recommend you move all your data uh, data if you have tons of data sitting there because those are processing farms, they, they tend to accumulate more data. Any any further questions on that? Thank you. Uh, Melanie's got a problem with um, audio, but Melanie, if you do, if that answers your question and we will put it into the Q&A blog post, um, just let us know that, that answers your question. And if you have anything further, do feel free to ask us again. Perfect. You should just said yes, it's answered the question. Thanks, Morali. <laughs> yeah. um, next question was from Carsten. Um, so, Carsten, feel free to come off mute if you want to speak to us live. His question was, what is the default username for IS underscore user during the import run? Yeah, so Anita or Daria, you want to take that? that yeah, I can take. So, yeah. the ES user should be the administrator user. Um. Yeah, this is custom speaking. Um, do, do so it is not like there is some default name, but uh, you should choose the name of the administrator user that you have. So by, uh, For example, the demo, it was demo user, but like it can be HAN admin user or something like that. Okay, this was my question. If uh, if the default user demo or HANA admin uh, will also work. If the... we, we don't recommend using those two. <laughs> we want you to create your own admin account. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it's okay. a more like a backend user for DWP uh, catalog, and so that we we definitely don't want. We don't recommend that to be used. Again, demo is a startup uh, uh, ID. We don't want you to use that. So we strongly encourage you to create your own admin account and use that. Again, it'll also help you for audit purposes and whatnot. Okay, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Carsten. If you have any other questions, feel free to come back off mute. Um, Okay, so Melanie's got another question, um, Morali and team. I don't know who wants to answer this one. Just says she's not familiar with the tenant ID. Is that similar to company ID? Someone can take yeah, that question. Daria can take that. Daria, please. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, so the tenant ID, um, uh, you will know what it is if you're using multi-tenancy feature. So if you don't use multi-tenancy feature, usually you have just single tenant that has uh, the name 0001 or something like that. You can check what tenants you have. If you check uh, uh, DB system schema, tenant table, you can check what tenant records you have. But uh, basically, yeah, it is like the companies. So if you use multi-tenancy feature, you have some companies. And for each company, you can have their own tenant and their own like separate uh, block of data for this tenant. Did that answer your question, Marino? It's um, Melanie. Melanie, if you can just reply oh, to sorry, the Melanie. chat. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a first name as well, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, it has. Um, really sorry, but her audio is not working. Sometimes this happens on Zoom. Um, so, yes, that's answered the question. Thank you. Um, okay. So, I see, Jane, uh, you have a question. Um, let me just give you the ability to unmute. Do you want to come off mute, Jane? Can you hear us? Yeah. Hello. Uh, yes, 
I, I heard that um, we have multi-tenancy. So I heard that when we do the import or export, we only need to do for the primary, right? The secondary, we don't have to do the export and import. So, so in DWP, the tenant data is so stored separately. You'll have one tenant and its and its subtenants. So, if you want, if you have uh, multiple two tenants, let's say you have two tenants and each has their subtenants, as uh, Anita was showing on the demo video. Once you specify all tenants, it's going to migrate all tenants together. Did that answer your question? Uh, kind of. Okay, maybe you can elaborate when maybe Daria can also jump in. Can you elaborate your question? Because the tenant we're talking about is, is different than the company. So that's what I want to make sure. We are not talking about ITSO migration here. We're talking about DWB specific migration. So Anita, if you want to uh, show the slide where we have all these uh, tables and schema names. Right, but we only have one company, but with uh, two, two D DWP catalog server. No, we are not talking about catalog. That's what I'm saying. So DWP oh. advanced DWP is, is what we're talking about. We're not talking about catalog. Uh, DWP catalog migration will be a separate oh, webinar yeah, we'll okay. be doing in the future. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Anita, you want to show yeah, the show the screen about the tables, the, the schema tables, and all that. I think the second or third slide keep going up. Yeah, stay here. So uh, Jane, we are talking about this. So these are the tables in DWP, not DWP catalog. So this is what we're talking about, right? And oh, okay. and these tables. Yeah, so and these data will be present for each tenant. So each tenant will have its own location, calendar, whatever, right? So these constitute uh, tables for each tenant, right, Daria? If you want to confirm that for me. So each tenant yeah, for, can have- for business yeah. schema, it is a separate data for each tenant. System schema doesn't have tenant, so it is a common data for all tenants. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no I, I, I fixed the them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, we have DWP, DWP Advanced, DWP Catalog, I, I get it, don't worry. Yeah, so, so the catalog, the service catalog, yeah, we'll, we'll cover that. That's a different tool. So HTM will cover that. Uh, so the, the tool we'll be using for migrating data for ITSM, the HTM tool, that'll cover DWP catalog migration. So we will cover that in the, one of the webinars for sure. Okay, great. Thank you. It's a lot to take in with all our products. It's better to ask those questions if in doubt. Thanks for the question. Um, okay, so that's answered all the questions we've got in the Q&A. So I don't know if there's anything else that anybody wants to ask. We've got still 10 or 15 minutes time left. Um, ah, Carsten, hello. I've just seen you put another question in. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you, Samantha. Um, yeah, um, when, I, when I have attachments in, in my source, which are greater than five uh, megabyte, um, how can I resolve this, this, this issue? I can take that. So the best practice answer is because the the attachments uh, size. Uh, okay, let me put it this way. So once we once we move the uh, uh, all the data into the converged platform, right? So now DWP is part of our uh, AR schema uh, tables, and it's it's using our uh, attachment size limitation. So uh, AR schema attachments, AR schema AR schema attachment table size has always been uh, five MB limitation for years, right? As you guys know, for, for ITSM users and whatnot. Uh, but again, for DWP users, if you have uh, like, how do I say this? So if you have like a few records here and there, you can work with the BMC support team and they can temporarily increase it for you, the max size, and you can bring it over. But if you have like many, many large attachments, we recommend you to relook at those attachments and, and probably remove them and then migrate it, right? And then not even add them back if it's already, already uh, you know what I'm saying, if it's not needed data. So that's how we recommend. But if it's like, say, some active data you needed it for a few few records and all that it's like we don't um our, the thing is it's okay you you bring in like say five or six attachments more than five mb in that's on a migration that's fine but if you're going to be doing hundreds of attachments which are more yeah we, we recommend you don't remove the attachments and migrate the data so hopefully that helps but there is a as i said you can work with the bmc support and they will be able to increase the attachment size temporarily. But again, we don't recommend it. You do it because it's a workaround. Right. 
that answer your question, Carsten? I don't know if it's gone on, on to mute. Yeah, it's um sometimes people have um issues with audio. Um okay, Carsten, if you can just confirm, I think that covered it, Morali. Um next question we had was from Alan. Alan, feel free to come off mute. Um his question was can we use HDM server to run all the utilities? Yeah, when you say server, uh, yeah, that's what I was mentioning. So uh, does, we want you to have a tools a server uh, or environment, whatever you call Windows environment or Linux end of the day. But again, HTML, we do recommend you to use use the Windows environment. Yeah, so you can have one Windows server. We call it, you can call it tools server, and you can install all these utilities, right? And if you're doing an on, if you're using it for an on-prem scenario, then you will have access to your targets. You can directly uh, input them. And if you're going to have a remote target like an on-prem to SaaS, where you'll be getting a staging server, where you have to FTP the uh, files over to import. So, for example, you do the export on the using the on uh, the tool server and on-premises, and then you'll FTP, and then you will use the same tools which will be available for you on a staging server to import both the HTM and DWP utility will be made available to you uh, if you're a SaaS SaaS uh, target. Then you'll you'll have it there as as part of your staging server setup. So you'll have HTM on both sides and then you can migrate your data that way. But yes, we do recommend you having one tool server dedicated for all these tools. Alan, can you hear us? I can see you've come off mute or are you having problems with audio? Hmm. Normally he's okay, actually, Morali. Normally he can talk. Um, I'm hoping that has answered no. your question. Yeah, Alan, if you can just put a response into the chat to let us know. Um, so that's all our questions. So I just open up again if there is any questions from anybody else or questions for the team that you'd like to get answered. That would be great if you want to come forward. Um, I think Carsten has also rejoined. I've just given him access again. So um, Carsten or Alan, <laughs> does either of you want to talk as soon as you're asking us questions? We're hoping that you've come back on with audio. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, um, thank you, Morali. To uh, you answered my question. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Thanks, Carsten. Okay. Um, Alan, I don't know if you want to rejoin or whether our answer was um, enough. I think you've said, yeah, thank you. Piers, we cannot hear you. No, we can't. <laughs> Normally, I know your audio is pretty good. Um, it's like the Monday feeling here, I think. <laughs> um, that's all our questions. So I guess, is there anything else, Morali, why we just give, because um, we've got 10 minutes left, um, why we give people an opportunity if there's any more questions that come up. Is there anything from the rest of the team that we've got on here that we want to showcase based on what we've discussed today? I know you and I are working also on the next session so april the 11th was the first session around tooling maybe give a bit of a recap for those on here that didn't join that because if you sign up to the webinar series or any of them i will share that link today um you will be able to get the uh, recording that's already been put onto youtube so even if you tick it it will give you the on-demand version you will also get today's session sent out and then morali i know we're going to be working together to get the final session so maybe if i just ask you to repeat what we did in session one obviously we've got the recap for today and then what the plan is for the third session which we're still to schedule into the calendar right absolutely sam thank you very much yes yeah, so we we are just trying to do a, a tool series migration tool series uh, just to make sure that whatever automation and tools we have available uh, so the customers and partners can leverage that so as part of that, so for the to support the migration process, whether it's on-prem deployment and migration or on-prem to Helix SaaS migration, so we have tools for customization migration and uh, data. So from a customization migration perspective, uh, uh, so basically we covered um, a license conversion utility uh, in the previous session, so that will be available for you, and then and then that's Shankar presented that for us, and then on the same series from a from a this was a data kind of a thing, but from a non-data perspective, the same series, we'll be covering the workflow migration utility in the next session. Uh, and that'll cover like three topics, workflow migration, auto reconciliation utility, and then how you can, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, perform uh, the three-way reconciliation in a more simpler manner. So today, if you're doing a three-way reconciliation and a few like 10 steps or whatnot, so we're gonna tell you how you can speed up the three-way reconciliation process when you when you use the workflow migration utility and the 
in conjunction with the auto reconnectivity. So that way you're you, you're basically if you're today if you're taking like three weeks to bring in your customizations, hopefully with these tools you'll be able to bring your customizations in like a few days or like maybe within a week. So that's our goal, right? From a, from those. And then to add on to that, so to data for data migration, we have, we have done many uh, webinars on HTM. In fact, we did one uh, uh, mm. uh, last month on troubleshooting and best practices as well. And to, for the data migration perspective, uh, Sam, maybe you don't know, but I'll reach out to you. We want to do one more, Sam, to cover the what uh, Jane t- Brown brought up today, uh, DWB catalog and smart IT. We're trying to com- going, going to combine that, but the tool will be the same, the HTM uh, tool. Uh, Helix Data Manager. So we'll we'll be doing a demo, uh, you know, webinar to show how you can migrate the data, catalog catalog data, and also smart ID data. So that's we're going to be trying to cover that. Um, okay. Yes, yes, yeah, and then yeah. So I know, and then we we have this uh, other one coming in uh, next week, right? Sam? 